welcome and thank you for attending Ontario ACORN's press conference calling on all parties to take action in support of ACORN's full rent control campaign to protect affordable housing. My name is Edward and I am the chair of Central Ottawa ACORN. Now for those that are unfamiliar, ACORN is a multi-issue, membership-based community union of low and moderate income people. We believe that social and economic justice can best be achieved by building community power for change. We have over 177,000 members organized into 30 neighborhood chapters in 10 regions across six provinces of this country. This June, we are actually celebrating our 20th year of community organizing in Canada. Today, ACORN has organized a provincial lobby day to meet with MPPs to discuss tenants urgently needed uh, for full rent control. We are joined today by ACORN leaders from Ottawa, Toronto, Hamilton, Brampton, Mississauga, London, and Kitchener. Now, I'll pass it over to Marcia Stone from Toronto ACORN and Jordan Smith from London ACORN. Thank you, Eddie. Um, my name is Marcia Stone. I am currently the chair of the Weston chapter. Weston, Canada's acorn came uh, in 2004 in Weston. That's where we started. So I'm happy to be here today to help celebrate our 20th anniversary. Now, I'm going to talk about full rent control campaign. Ontario doesn't need more luxury rental housing which is all the, that's currently being built. We need to build housing that is actually affordable for those who are low and moderate income families. Yet this is rarely mentioned with all the province's discussion of housing supply. Simply building more housing with no attention to what kind of housing is being built will not get us out of this crisis. Furthermore, we need to protect affordable housing that already exists because in Ontario we are losing 12 affordable units on the private market for every one, every one of the units of affordable units housing be, uh, affordable housing being built. Sorry, why is this happening? The glaring loophole in Ontario's current rent control laws are a huge part of the reason. For example, rent control does not apply to new developments and units that become vacant. This is why we see rents double, even triple, when a tenant moves out and double-digit and double digit rent increases in newer buildings. That's disgraceful. Another exemption to rent control is the above guideline increases, or the AGIs that allow landlords to pass down the cost of major repairs or building upgrades to the tenants. But where is our rent going every month, if not back into the building? AGIs force tenants to cover the cost of their landlord's investment without seeing anything in return themselves. And with that, I pass it on to Jordan. Thank you, Marcia. You're welcome. Uh, my name is Jordan Smith. I'm the chair of the Carling Stony Brook chapter of uh, London Acorn. Um, as the province de uh, debates Bill 185, uh, cutting the red tape to build more homes act of 2024, Acorn is again calling out the government for missing the mark on affordable housing. Without rent control, zero housing units built over and under this bill are affordable. As renters, ACORN members have been directly impacted by Ontario's weak rent control laws. Over the past two decades of door knocking in apartment buildings, countless phone calls, house visits and meetings with tenants across Ontario, we've heard over and over again the problems tenants experience with rent evictions, dem evictions, AGIs and landlords neglecting repairs for long-term tenants in an effort to push them out. 
Some of the highlights uh, from our fight for full rent control have included organizing uh, ACORN tenant unions in buildings uh, to build power for tenants to win repairs and stop rent evictions and AGIs. We've held countless local direct actions fighting corporate landlords. We've had many provincial days of actions demanding change from our government. Today, we are had over a 200-person rally here at Queen's Park. And beyond that, we've had uh, press conferences similar to this one. We've held town hall events. Can, uh, we've done canvassing, uh, re many reports, tenant surveys uh, that are too many, too many to count. Um, I'm going to pass it on now to Tanya Burkhart from Peel Acorn and Marva Burnett, uh, the president of Acorn Canada. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. My name is Tanya Burkhart, and I am a leader in Peel Acorn. Specifically, Acorn is calling for rent control to be applied to all units, not just those built prior to November 2018. One common myth is that rent controls hurt housing supply. However, the, the evidence says otherwise. A 2020 CMHC study found that rent control had no impact on housing starts. What it did find, though, was that rent control exemptions for new builds, like in Ontario, it leads to increased rents. Doug Ford removed rent control on these new builds, and ACORN members want it back. Vacancy control. So there is no limit on how much rent can be increased after a tenant moves out. According to CMHC's January 2024 rental market report, rents for two-bedroom units in the GTA that turned over to a new tenant were 31.2% higher than those that did not see a change in tenancy. I'll turn it over to Marva. Hi, everyone. Marva Burnett and I'm the chair of Scarborough Acorn and the chair of Acorn Canada. The, I'm here to say that the province should ban AGIs. Acorn's latest report that analyzed the LTB, that's the Landlord Tenants Board, data through freedom of information request found that nearly 80% of AGIs are filed by corporate landlords. These are massive corporations with billions of dollars in assets. We, have, uh, we, we hear arguments to that AGIs are necessary so that landlords can afford major repairs. However, over the, over, out of the over four, 400 landlords that filed for AGIs, only two or individuals as opposed to the balance being corporations. So that should tell you what's going on. Small landlords are really applying for these additional rent increase, showing they don't really need them. This is because AGI is a simple, a, simply a vehicle for corporate landlords to extract more money from tenants and they should be, they should not be allowed to. Or, the urgency of these actions cannot be overstated. Inaction has horrible consequences. Now I invite Charlene from Hamilton to speak. Hello, FCQs. Hi, Sarah. Hi. Uh, and fellow ACORN members. Uh, my name is Charlene Morris, and I'm a member of ACORN Hamilton's downtown chapter. I'm going to speak about the impact of AGIs on low and moderate income tenants began with my, well, basically through my experience. Um, first, a little about myself. I moved to Canada in the fall of 2015 and filed for refugee status. After initially living in Toronto, I moved to Hamilton in 2019. Um, I live in a one-bedroom apartment and I share, that I share with my cat. <laughs> Two months after moving, um, I lost my job. The job market and pay rates in Hamilton are terrible. Um, by the end of 2019, I was unemployed without hope for gainful, in, uh, gainful or sustainable employment. I have been a student since January 2020 and did two years of college in one at Mohawk and opted for the college university transfer 
And now I just finished my uh, penultimate year at Mac studying an undergraduate honors in political science. In 2021, Equiton, a real estate investment trust, bought the building I live in, in downtown Hamilton. In the same year, I received my first M1 with the regulated 1.2%, which took effect on the first day of the new year in 2022. I received my second N1, an AGI, uh, of an additional 2.08% on top of the regulated 2.5% on that year, uh, making that a 4.58% increase that took effect on the first day of 2023. We have not been to the LTBS yet on that, but I received my third N1 within another, with another 2.5% increase, which took effect on the first day of this year. Minus the AGI amount, that is the total, that, okay, minus the AGI amount, yeah, minus the AGI amount, that is a total of 6.2% rent increase in the past three years for me. If this AGI gets passed at the LTB, which is the building superintendent, which the building superintendent swears by that they'll get it passed because they're doing a lot of stuff on the building, then that would make that would mean an 8.28% increase for me for uh, over a three-year time. As a full-time student, unemployed, with an invisible <coughs> lifetime disability, you all know <laughs> that this auto automatically puts me at risk of homelessness. Um, but for those who don't, uh, for those who don't fully connect the dots, I receive OSAP assistance for school and ODSP. Those are my only two sources of income. I receive a hundred. Okay, I receive twelve hundred and forty-two bucks per month from ODSP. A sixty-five dollar month reduction because they say I owe them <laughs> like eight hundred and forty-four dollars. According to my landlord, my rent is $1,107.55 uh, per month. According to my calculations, it's $1,085.53. For four years ago, my rent was $965. I shop at food banks, and one food bank has now become inadequate to supply me, and I live alone, remember, for a month's worth of food. So I have been actually researching work, and whereas I can... Uh, find another food bank. After paying for rent and insurance, there isn't even enough for all my bills. My phone bill is currently overdue. Uh, so <laughs> at any time now I can do a service. I had to get new glasses because my glasses broke. That cost me out of pocket. My total, <laughs> the total for this, uh, this pair of glasses is almost $1,200. Right? And uh, I could only get, I think, $248 from ODSP to cover that. Uh, so this is basically what I'm saying is, uh, like, all this is honest, unsustainable, right? Mm -hmm. I have been stressed, I've been depressed many times in the past three years, and of course, this is all this is what I'm studying. And the thought, uh, the thought of homelessness drives me freaking crazy. Um, the loophole in rent control creates and enforces poverty on a segment of the population, on those who are most vulnerable due to disability, unemployment, or both. Factoring in a fixed income, inflation, and systematic rejection of equitable income opportunities through even part-time or summer jobs, I cannot afford another rent increase, let alone an AGI. With other ACORN members and tenants in the building, we organize meetings and, uh, a, and an action to oppose the AGI. We have spoken to the press and retained a paralegal through the City of Hamilton Legal Fund. Full rent control with a ban on AGIs is the best solution to cap the increasing homelessness crisis that has gripped Ontario's cities. Greedy corporate landlords do not care about people's predicaments or conditions. In my building alone, some people have received back-to-back -back AGIs. Some have been threatened with eviction notices for not paying AGIs that have not yet been approved. My store may be unique, but it is like many who are living in housing precarity. 
for many who are just a paycheck away from homelessness and for many people working minimum wages and part-time jobs. AGIs are cosmetic or regular maintenance costs, rates and financialized landlords transfer to tenants. ACORN demands banning AGIs. Thank you for listening. ACORN invited all parties to send a representative to speak today in support of our campaign. Uh, and we are pleased to have several MPPs with us today. Uh, starting off with uh, Toronto St. Paul's MPP, uh, Jill Andrew from the NDP. Um, first and foremost, I'd like to say thank you to ACORN. Um, to those who may be watching, uh, there are over a dozen folks that you can't see, um, plus the folks that are on the stage. Um, I want to thank you all for your leadership, uh, for your courage, and for your resilience. But frankly, resilience should never be enough. It's not enough. Uh, resilience should not replace government responsibility to ensure that every Ontarian is safely housed in a home where they can hold their head up high and have dignity. I represent St. Paul's. And in St. Paul's, as well as across Ontario, we have a housing crisis. We have a homelessness crisis, and we have an affordability crisis. And my message to Doug Ford and his majority government is to do what's right and ensure that homes and having a house can actually be a human right. That every Ontarian can get access. It is not okay that in St. Paul's we actually lost a couple tenants, sisters, who had to leave, flee the area. Their rent increase went to $3,500 for a two bedroom and two bathroom in the Young and Eglinton area. When they complained, the rent was raised to 9000 or 9500 but I think it was 9000 Either way, absurd. Mm -hmm. Absurd to ask folks to pay this. The last speaker talked about food. Housing, shelter, having access to shelter, having access to food are critical, basic needs. Mm -hmm. And in St. Paul's, our food banks are routinely undershelved, if not empty. One of our food banks, Hillcrest Community Food Bank, several times, half an hour into their two-hour food bank on Sunday, there's a sticky note on the door that says, sorry, we're out of food. People are struggling, Doug Ford, mm -hmm. conservatives. Mm -hmm. And we need full rent control on every building in Ontario. And we need that on buildings built after November 15th, 2018, yes. when this conservative government ruthlessly took away, mm -hmm. got to be professional up here, mm -hmm. took mm -hmm. away rent control, making it very hard for people to survive. We need real rent control. I'm proud to have put forth legislation in the past that we co-sponsored with other NDP MPPs calling for rent control. Mm -hmm. In the pandemic, we called for a rent freeze. We have called for inclusionary zoning for more rent gear to income housing, for an end to vacancy decontrol. Mm -hmm. We need transparency between tenants. 
You can't be scamming one tenant after the other and rent it, raising the rent three times on them with no limit. I have personally put forth legislation calling for a ban on AGIs. I did that a couple years ago during the pandemic. It was to be a temporary ban, but I tell you, as you learn, you do better. And over the last two years, I've been talking to constituents about these AGIs still. We've got thousands of signatures calling for rent control. We've got hundreds, if not thousands, of signatures calling for a ban on AGIs. I'm calling for this government to reinstate rent control for all buildings. Listen to ACORN. They are the experts, not you, Doug Ford, who doesn't even listen to his own housing task force when it comes to recommendations. Stop building these luxury condos that nobody can afford, that have no rent control, and invest in the properties we already have, but not at the expense of people on fixed income and people on ODSP. And by yes. the way, double at least ODSP. At least. Yes. So thank you very much. I will continue to work with ACORN. ACORN, thank you. ACORN has been a presence also in St. Paul's in every riding across Ontario, ensuring tenants know their rights. And Doug Ford, the clock is ticking. Get it done now. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Thank you, Jill. We also have Kitchener Center MPP Ashlyn Clancy from the Green Party. Thank you so much. I'm really happy to be here with Acorn today. You've done amazing work for renters across the province of Ontario. Uh, renters deserve safe homes they can afford in the communities they know and love. Instead, they're getting gouged, gouged by massive greed. Tenancy rules don't properly protect renters from the huge year-over-year -year rent increases, from illegal bad faith evictions from greedy landlords, and from the disappearance of truly affordable rental housing. We have a 0% vacancy rate in my town, and that's why each person who gets evicted is facing the reality of being unsheltered, of being homeless. Every day, people are being displaced from their homes by bad acting landlords to in the pursuit of profits, record profits, I might add. Just a few weeks ago, the Ford government had a chance, but they voted against my bill, the Keeping People Housed Act, which was designed to deliver, to, to deliver real relief, to strengthen protections for renters, and preserve Ontario's affordable housing stock. He had a chance to say yes to fairness. Uh -huh. It included bringing back rent and vacancy control, as well as measures to protect against this massive use of illegal rent evictions and dem evictions. It brought, would investigate the misuse of above guideline increases that squeeze seniors, folks on ODSP, on low and minimum wages, uh, one increase away from losing their shelter all the time. And this is why we see record amounts of homelessness and encampments in our communities. A 300% increase by 2028 in Kitchener, and we have twice the amount of use in one year of our local food bank. So it is crucial that we come together and work across party lines, build the political people power that we know we need in this province to stop this troubling pattern of driving young people out of our province, driving low and middle income folks out of their homes, and stop homes being turned into hotels and her hotels being turned into shelters. I'm glad we're here today to speak up against the greed that keeps people from having shelter and food they can count on. Let's stop the greed. Thank you, Ashlyn. And finally, we have independent MPP Sarah Jama from Hamilton Center. Hey, everyone. We're happy to be here with ACORN across Canada, the various chapters that are here today pushing for the elimination of AGIs, pushing for real rent control, and overall just pushing for tenants to have the right to exist freely in Ontario. What we've seen over the past few years especially has been a manufactured housing crisis. We don't need to be in the position that we're in right now where people cannot afford to live 
anywhere across this province. What's happening is Doug Ford is choosing to invest in developers and, and uh, for-profit buildings, but we need to be investing in non-profit housing, really making sure that the things people need to survive, food and rent, are not being commodified. I truly believe and value everybody's right to exist in this province, and a government that governs with care and compassion and love is one that allows people to have places to live. So yes, rent control needs to be implemented immediately, and I'll be working with ACOR and Hamilton next Monday to put forward a motion to eliminate AGIs in its entirety. Secondly, <laughs> secondly, I also really value the work that ACORN has been doing for decades, but it's also ridiculous that the onus is on everyday residents who are facing evictions themselves, who are experiencing homelessness themselves, to be lobbying over and over again, hosting rallies over and over again. Enough is enough, and I really do think this government needs to put, uh, to re needs to respect ACORN and all the housing advocates that are asking for legislation to change. And we can do that by giving organizations like ACORN and tenant rights organizations collective bargaining rights. And so we'll be moving a motion, I'm working with ACORN next Monday as well, to say that tenant organizations should have the right to be able to bargain with their landlords and give them collective bargaining rights just like unions so that we can move this discourse away from, <laughs> away from supporting landlords, um, which is how the LTV is structured currently, which supports landlord voices over everyday tenants, and toward eliminating that power imbalance between landlords and everyday tenants and organizations that support tenants. And so I'm here to say I really support the work that ACORN is doing. I think that we need to be governing with love and compassion. We need the government to say that they value um, people across Ontario. In my writing in Hamilton Centre, about 67% of people who live there are renters, and people are homeless because of an inability to afford rent, and have actually died uh, due to being homeless. And so it's the, the responsibility needs to be on Ford to save people's lives, to actually value everybody's right to live and exist freely, and we need to be supporting ACORN's demands. Thank you. Right. Yeah.